Hey guys, Mighty Gazelle here, and today I'm doing a little bit of a different video than I normally do. I figured I've been making YouTube videos for about over a year now, and some of you guys actually don't know how I record my Let's Plays, so I figured I'd do a little bit of a behind the scenes look as to how I actually record my videos for my Let's Plays. Uh, it's a pretty simple process, really, and then these are the these are the only applications I really use to record all of my gameplay and audio. Um, so I'm going to walk you through step by step as to actually how, how I go about recording a Let's Play video. So first and foremost, the most important one of all is the Game Capture HD software. Um, this is the one that actually records all the gameplay. As you can see, I have my Wii U plugged in to demonstrate as to how this actually happens. So what you want to do is, first of all, choose what you want to stream. It could be from PS4, Xbox One, it could be anything really. Uh, even retro consoles. Um, and when you plug in the console that you want through all the... I'm not going to go through how to plug in an Elgato capture card, but uh, when you have everything set up, you go in here and you choose which of the so this, uh, the systems you're actually using to record. Uh, in this case, I have Wii U selected. Um, once you have that selected, you choose the profile of what you want to record and as well as the quality. I usually go about somewhere up here for the quality, which is... Honestly, the whole the whole uh, meter right here, it all looks pretty much the same. At the end, you'll notice a little bit of a difference. Mainly, the higher you go, the more gigabytes it takes per minute. Um, down here, you don't have to worry about this too much if you're using HD, but if you're using a retro console, which I don't have plugged in at the moment, you you can fiddle around with these depending on your preference because that'll actually matter then, but uh, that's to your discretion as to how you'd actually go about doing that. Um, once you have your console selected, you can adjust your brightness. Uh, it'll see it'll reflect on the left. The, the main box on this uh, software, by the way, is uh, the preview, the preview window as to what you're actually recording. Uh, you can't actually play your gameplay and use this as your screen because there's a little bit of a lag time. I'd say it's about two or three seconds, so it would not be fitting to use that as your gameplay screen. So you actually have to have a normal other monitor or a TV to use. So uh, once you select it, it'll kind of adjust and it'll pop back up. Um, and then when you're ready to record, click down here and record. Uh, down here you have a nice little timer as, uh, as well as how many gigabytes you have left in your storage. Uh, once you're done recording, click and click record once again and your video will be over here when you click the edit tab it should be right there uh for longer videos like if i did a recording session that was about an hour or so long it might take a little bit of uh download or processing time to get the video ready to go but this one was nine seconds so it really wasn't that big of a deal uh now that we're done recording our gameplay as we wanted to record it um you want to click right here and there, there's a video right there. Uh, it's all good to go. It's all recorded and whatnot. And after that, you can close out of the game capture. This is, again, this is how I record gameplay videos. I understand that everyone has their own preference as to how they actually do go about this. But this is the way I do it, and I find it pretty easy and very efficient. So the video editing software I use is called Wondershare Filmora. I know a lot of people use Adobe, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but it's one of the Adobe programs, um, and people usually use that, but I, I use uh, Wondershare Filmora because it is everything that I need for my videos, so what I want to do is I want to, I'm actually going to have to reopen um, Game Capture just for a second because I need to get that video, actually no, it's right here, I'm, I'm a dummy. Sorry, Game Capture, you don't need to be open right now. So I have the video open that I want to edit and whatnot. I'm going to drag it right on here. And boom, I have my video and it's on the timeline that I can use to edit. Um, now that it's on here, you can do various various things. You can split the uh, split the video if you need to for any reason. I do not need to do that. Um, also, if you click edit, you can adjust the audio levels for the gameplay. This is very handy for games like Kingdom Hearts I'm doing right now because the gameplay tends to be on kind of louder. Um, again, you can record however high volume you want in the Elgato settings. I didn't really go over that, but you can adjust the volume of what you record. 
Uh, if you accidentally record it too high, you can lower the volume. If you record it too low, you can increase it. It's a very useful feature. Um, I'm sure professionals that professionals out there have it all like recorded perfectly beforehand, but for me, I just kind of go in and make sure I have it nice and ready to go before the video is uploaded. So that's how you up, uh, change. You can also change the video, uh, the contrast and whatnot. I don't need to do that though because it's fine as it is. Uh, the preview window in the top right, it looks kind of blurry. That's because the preview window is not the same standard as your uh, the actual video is. But no need to worry. When you export the video, it'll be full HD goodness that you would all expect from a video software program. Um, now, that's that covers the gameplay side of things. I'll come back to this in just a moment. But as for my voice recording, I use a program called Audacity. Now, when I click the record on the... Game Capture HD, I also go and click Start Recording on Audacity. Now, as you can see, my voice is being recorded in Audacity right now. Uh, this is the file that I'm eventually going to upload and put over this video. Um, it's pretty cool. You can you can see your wavelengths and stuff like that and see if you need to adjust your uh, input level on your mic. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now, but when you're done, you can click File, Save to save your recording if you really want to. Or you can just do file export to export the audio um, to use in your videos. So if I wanted to use this, when I'm done with this recording, I'm going to export this voice recording. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to drag and drop it into Wondershare Filmora. Now, I don't have, I obviously can't do that at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my voice recording. I know I misspelled it, but I have been too lazy to change it for all this time. And I'm just going to use a random, uh, I'll use a random voice recording that I have. This one's way too long, but I'm just going to, let's see. Just for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you guys split and I don't want to use the rest of it. So I'll delete it and then I'll drag the video or drag it to wherever I want the video to start. And it, all I have to do is at the beginning of any video, Make sure that my audio matches up correctly with the gameplay. That's honestly the hardest part of the whole thing. Just making sure the audio matches up correctly. And yeah, that's about it. That's basically, that's how I get my videos set up. Now for a long recording session, if it was an hour plus, uh, at one point throughout the video, I might chop it in half and just, uh, say, okay, that's what I want. One episode to be it would be like this part of the video. And I want the, uh, another episode to be the rest of the part of the video. Depending on how I don't want, I don't like to make too overly long videos. So, cause I don't think you guys want to sit there for an hour plus watching these videos. So I make sure to cut it off at, at an organic time where it doesn't feel like abrupt or anything like that. And yeah, then I'll export one video as a episode and export one as another. That's how that basically happens. I'm going to undo that for the moment. And now that I have everything set up and all my audio is lined up how I want it, I'll, this is just a goof video as you can see, but I'm going to export, create video, and uh, I'm gonna name it whatever title I want it to be, whether it's a let's play for Kingdom Hearts, Advance Wars, etc., etc. the destination for the file. And this is very important. You wanna make sure your settings are how you want them to be. Um, my resolution for the Advance Wars Let videos is 720p, so I leave it at uh, 1280 by 720 For Kingdom Hearts, I would bump it up to 1920 by 1080 It all depends. When you're doing retro consoles like GameCube and whatnot, you don't need anything higher than 720 because they can't physically output anything technically above 480, but really 720 just makes it look nice. Um, so I would recommend 720 for retro consoles and 1080 for newer consoles. Um, that's just a personal preference, by the way. Uh, everyone has their own tastes as to how they do it, as well as uh, changing the frames per second. I personally think 30 is fine for Advance Wars, and Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD Remix on PS3 is only in 30 frames per second, so otherwise I would uh, do one that would be 60 frames per second for that. And once everything's done and whatnot, I'm just going to title this the test video one for the heck of it. Um, that's, I don't know why it's called Indonesian protest. I think it was for a class project or something like that, but it's basically a folder I have that I dump all my videos to. And this being only 10 second long, this won't take very long to uh, convert and send to the file. 
And yeah, that's the process of how I go through making my YouTube videos. Um, the final tar the final uh, project will have the audio and whatnot for. Uh, you, I don't know if you guys can hear it. I don't know if it's playing. I don't have my headphones in, but uh, yeah, that should that's how that's the final product. That's exactly what I go to YouTube and eventually upload. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for my um, tutorial as to how I actually make my YouTube videos. Now, for thumbnails, I guess I can show it off pretty quickly. Uh, for thumbnails, I take a screenshot of the gameplay and the video software of any scene that I want to use as a thumbnail. Uh, Photoshop takes a little bit to load on my computer. I still haven't finished my new computer yet, so this might take a little bit. But um, basically, for the thumbnails, it's a pretty straightforward and easy process. Um, I have pre-made templates that I have. I'll show it off as soon as this gets done loading. Uh, okay, Kingdom Hearts, we'll use you. That was the most recent one I did. Basically, I have the number in the bottom left, I have the logo in the top left, and the snapshot of the gameplay that I want to use as the main background of the thumbnail. Now, if I wanted to change that out, I would simply uh, delete this Yes, delete snapshot, okay. And then I could use basically any photo that I want to, like I'll just pick a random one. This is an old Alan Wake one I have. And this is how I would make the background. Boom. Now obviously this isn't Kingdom Hearts, but you get you guys get the idea. And once I'm done with that, I just export what I have and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And also you wanna change the number obviously for every thumbnail that you do. But uh, yeah, that's how I go about making my YouTube videos. No one's actually asked, but I figured maybe some people might be curious as to how I make them. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, just kind of a casual sort of me talking about how I do things on my channel. Uh, until next time, it's been Mighty Gazelle, and I hope you all have a mighty day. I also hope you guys keep looking forward to more of my Let's Plays. You guys are really great, and I thank you all for the support so far. It's been absolutely fun on YouTube. Bye, guys.